In the name of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. You have to forgive me, I'm nursing a cold, so <laughs> I'm going to be uh, a little hoarser today than I usually am, but it's such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful blessing for me to share this time with you today. Thank you for having us. The bishop is, 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 loves you, as you all know, and our, our, our diocesan staff supports you. As you, if you didn't know, we are so 5,000% with you, and we pray with you and pray for you all the time. So it's my blessing to be with you on today as we are celebrating the Feast of All Saints, remembering those who made the way for us to be here now. And with this feast, we bring forward the history of this celebration of our earthly relationship with the church triumphant. From our ecclesiastical roots in England through the Reformation to the present church as we know it. And we honor all those who, like our Lord Jesus Christ, died defending the faith from St. Paul the Apostle through, some might argue, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And referencing Buddhist theology, we are the sum total of all who have gone before us, who have brought us to this very moment. Yet, as Christians in the truest sense of that name, our beliefs sit squarely in the tension of where we have come from and where we are going. Through God's resurrection of Jesus the Christ, God set before us in our present state the promise of renewed life. We don't have to accept the snares and stumbling blocks of the world that the world puts in our path because God gave us the promise of new and unending life through Jesus. So honoring the saints is rather like a back to the future scenario. We bring forth our lives into our present, which is promised to lead us into our future of new life. And I hope this translates into good news for you this morning. As you traverse your current journey along the path towards renewed life as a church, as one who loves the church, I sit with you as you acknowledge your need for healing when healing was not on the menu, but growth and vitality. I imagine even with the naming of your new interim priest, you may feel like Mary when she angrily went out to meet Jesus as he approached her home after Lazarus died. If you had been here, she remonstrated him, my brother would not have died. But we know Mary's belief in Jesus was strong because she believed in his healing grace and powers. But Jesus waited to go to Lazarus on purpose to push the envelope of belief beyond saving life to giving life. And that's where we are today. We thought we were saving the life of this church, but we find ourselves in the position of giving it new life. God pushed the envelope. The words of the closing hymn may also speak to your hearts. They are those, they are they whose hearts were riven, sore with woe and anguish tried, who prayerful oft have striven with the God they glorified. You did not expect to be here in this place of woe having so faithfully striven with God to bring about a better church. But Jesus has pushed the envelope beyond your belief, just as he did for Mary and Martha, and he's pushed it to a place of renewal of life. 
that you had not yet imagined. Jesus is calling for a new Jerusalem, as St. John writes in our text from the Revelation this morning, and it, it merits repeating. And when you hear the words again, apply them to you. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. God is making all things new, dear St. Thomas. This is a time for you to embrace all your good intentions for this church and renew them as the new heaven and the new earth. This is the time to allow God to be among you more than before, to allow God to remove the sting of death from the things that are passing away. This is the time for you to open your hearts for the new earth God has planned for you. And for those of you who are parents of adult children as I am, this time of concern for your church may remind you of your child rearing days. The concern of how are they going to turn out may seem all too familiar. You give them everything you can, especially those of us who gave more than they had growing up. And when the children don't do as we had planned or hope, we wonder either where did we go wrong or what's wrong with them? This syndrome became all too familiar with us boomer generation gap kids who rebelled against what we thought was wrong with the world and in our lives. My parents were survivors of the Depression and World War II and the concomitant racism that is built into the structure of this country. And they didn't understand how I could rebel against the citizenship that had, they had only tasted, but never fully ingested. I heard, what's wrong with you, a lot. Yet, here I am. And your children, and my children, and this church, and the world are living beyond what we might have imagined for them. Living into our belief in God is to live beyond our belief, always alert that there is more beyond the horizon. God is beyond the horizon, ever drawing us closer to God's vision of a new heaven and a new earth. So we need not ask ourselves, where did we go wrong? Or what's wrong with them? Because those questions only address what has passed away. We need only ask, what has God planned for us? What new things does God have in store for us? What new life for this church does God have in the wings waiting for us? Woe happens when we plan, think we got it all covered, and our plans fall apart, and then we get angry at God, like Mary got angry with Jesus. Her faith took her as far as she knew, but Jesus had more in store. Jesus gave Mary and Martha a foretaste of renewed life, the same new life that God has in store for you. Your faith has been tested by the trials you are now experiencing, but the test doesn't determine the outcome. 
how well your faith sees you through this time will. Thus we invoke the saints who have gone before us to show us how to withstand the test of our faith. There are so many wonderful new paths to explore as a church. Take this time to join your church leadership in new ways to see your church. Re-envision who you are beyond who you want to be. Find out what your community needs from you and find the way to share in those needs. Be ready for God to push the envelope again and again. Your faith is your stronghold. So let us be as the saints who have gone before us and remain as the cloud of witnesses with us, drawing on our faith as God leads us to the new heaven and the new earth beyond ourselves, where God resides with us. God promises new life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us live beyond our faith to receive it. Amen. <laughs>